Hello, sentence surgeons. I'm so excited to share this sentence with you this week. It's on a really good book from our um, Bethel Book Award list called The Boy Who Grew a Forest. And it's a kind of simple sentence. Well, okay, I take that back. Um, there is a topic that we're going to talk about called simple sentences, complex sentences, and stuff like that um, in the next few weeks. This one actually is not a simple sentence. A simple sentence um, just pretty much has like one subject, one predicate. It doesn't get too complicated. And this one actually has a comma in it and a conjunction. And the conjunction is not even in the second half of the sentence like normal. because It's actually in the beginning. Um, so let's read the sentence. It says, if he wanted more plants to grow, he would have to create a richer soil. So you can see how those two sentences could actually kind of work on their own. He would have to create a richer soil if he wanted more plants to grow. Actually, that one's not going to. He wanted more plants to grow. You could say, he would have to create a richer soil if he wanted more plants to grow. So you could actually flip-flop those two. So this is a complex sentence. But you don't have to worry about that too much. I just wanted to mention it to you so you've heard that phrase before we get to it in a little while. Um, so let's look at the punctuation at the end of the sentence. It is a period. And we know that that means that it either needs to be a declarative sentence, where it's just stating something, or it needs to be an imperative where it's a command. If you look at it, um, he would have to create a richer soil if you wanted more plants to grow. That's not really a command. Nobody's forcing him to do anything. Um, so we are going to call this sentence a declarative sentence. Declarative. All right, and let's look at what's going on. So the first word in the sentence is if. Now, if is a conjunction that combines two sentences that could be separate sentences on their own. However, it happens to be at the very beginning of the sentence. So instead of being in the second half of the sentence, it's in the beginning. And it's okay, it's just a more unique structure that some authors use just to shake their writing up a little bit and make it sound a little more interesting. So the word he is taking the name of the person and replacing it. So this is a pronoun. We're wanted, wanted. Wanted is an action, want is an action. It just happens to be, have an ed on the end of it. So it's actually a past tense verb. Okay, and then we have more plants. Okay, this one was actually tricky. I looked this up on my own because I, I was having trouble deciding what the word more should be. We know that plants are things, and it has an S on it, so it's a noun. Not just any noun, it's a plural noun. So then I was considering this word more. More is describing the plant. It's an amount that it has. So. I was wondering if it was going to be an adverb, but actually, when I looked it up online, it told me that it was an adjective. So it's describing the amount of plants. Then we have a quick little prepositional phrase, because we know to is a preposition. And grow is another action, so it's a verb. So to grow would be a prepositional phrase, to grow. All right, then we're to the word he again, which we already realized earlier is a pronoun because it replaces the name of the character. He would have to, would have. So these combine together, these are both verbs. Remember how last week we were talking together about, well at least when I'm making this video is last week. We were talking about how sometimes verbs stack up on top of each other. They help each other. They link with each other. Um, so we have two verbs here. Verb. Verb. Would have to. To is a preposition, just like we talked about before. Showing the positioning of something, it kind of indicates. To create, create is a verb, it's an action that somebody does. A is one of those simple words that's called an article. Richer soil. 
Okay, so soil is a thing. We're going to call this a noun. So richer, we know, is an adjective, but this is a special type of adjective. And we are focusing on these adjectives this week. So you can write this down somewhere. I'm trying to find a note card really quick. Um, oops, there's a pink one. Okay. So there are some special adjectives that we've already talked about a little bit this year that compare things and make things stand out. So let's say I am using the word big. Well, sometimes the word big needs to compare to something else, right? So if I'm going to compare big to something, I might say, so comparing, so we're going to call this comparative. This is a comparative adjective. If I have a pencil that is bigger than Miss Jordan's, I'm comparing my pencil with hers. Okay, then we can also have what's called superlative adjectives. So we can really, right here we focus on the word compare. Now, compare normally has an E. And then super, like I think of like a superhero where superheroes are like, the most important, like they have the best skills, but super means like awesome and crazy, so it's above the rest. So we have big, bigger, and then the last one would be biggest. So usually the one that's like indicating the most or the most, so this is comparing between two things, and this is comparing between a group of things. So maybe there's like three pencils, it's like my pencil, Miss Jordan's pencil, and um, Mr. Crytel's pencil. Like the three of us have pencils, but one of us has to have the best pencil. So this is a group of things to compare. And this is just between two. And big by itself is just not really comparing it to anything. It's just saying it's big. Okay, so this one right here, richer, has an ER at the end. That's comparing that to something else. Richer soil. Richer soil than it used to have. So it's a comparative adjective. It compares the soil before to the soil after. All right, guys. Oh, I almost forgot. We need to identify our subject and our predicate. This is a complex sentence, so there's more than one subject and more than one predicate. So he wanted in the first half of the sentence. In the other half of the sentence, he would have to create. So I would say he would have been like to create. Um, he would have. We'll just leave it at that. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed our complicated sentence this week.